from around 40 and sometimes a bit earlier even from around 35 all women are entering the perimenopause the phase leading up to the menopause if we like it or not it is the transition phase between having uh, regular periods and them stopping altogether. My name is Sabine. I'm a nutritionist and health coach and I specialize in thyroid health. I help women over 30 improve their energy levels, their sleep, their mood and to get their zing back. We all know that we women go into the menopause from around 50 years of age as that is when our store of eggs runs out and we stop having our periods. But today's video is about the phase leading up to the menopause, the perimenopause, and how this affects your hormones, including the thyroid. And I'll give you four pointers in the end on what you can focus on when you're over 40 to help balance your hormones. The big difference between perimenopause and menopause is that in perimenopause, we can still get pregnant. So your hormones, estrogen and progesterone start to fluctuate from around 40 and sometimes a bit earlier, which can cause symptoms such as irregular periods, weight gain, hot flashes, night sweats, sleep issues, changes in libido, mood swings, heavy, painful periods, being less stress resistant, problems with memory and concentration and headaches. The production of progesterone depends on regular ovulation every month. And once we don't ovulate every month anymore in that perimenopausal phase, we have lower levels of progesterone. Estrogen levels decline as well, but not as much as uh, progesterone. And this imbalance between those two hormones can then cause those symptoms. And not every woman will experience really bad symptoms. Some notice only a touch of them, uh, but Number one reason why symptoms could potentially be worse is when we have a high level of stress. So when uh, you go and see your doctor, uh, because they don't really have the time to analyze your diet and lifestyle, they tend to prescribe artificial hormones like the pill or HRT or antidepressants, for example. Or they say that this is normal for your age and um, it would be better in a few years' time. And it's not unusual for women over 40 to develop symptoms of an underactive thyroid. Symptoms does not mean automatically that your thyroid is underactive. Often GPs test your TS TSH value and when that is raised, they might prescribe thyroid hormones, but you have to understand that TSH is not actually a thyroid hormone. It, and it's not even produced by your thyroid, but by a gland in your brain. And TSH then stimulates the thyroid to produce thyroid hormones. It's a very important to test all the thyroid hormones, including antibodies, to get a good overview of the health of, the, of your thyroid. And I will post a link to a previous blog with more details on this um, so you know what exactly that needs to be tested. And I'm not saying you should never take thyroid hormones because if the thyroid is affected and uh, it does not produce the right amount of hormones anymore, thyroid hormones can be very useful. But before you take them, make sure that your doctor has tested all the relevant markers. And because we women in our 40s tend to have an estrogen dominance and a high stress level, chances are that we also have a raised TSH level. So it's even more important to get a really good understanding of the health of your thyroid. There are a lot of things you can do with a healthy lifestyle to support your thyroid. And I have a few blogs around this subject. There are tests available that test your female hormones and your thyroid hormones, which can give you a better understanding where your body is at with all the hormones. And um, you can then work with a more targeted approach on uh, what nutritional and lifestyle factors can help alleviate your symptoms. And I can show you ways to get off that hormonal roller coaster during the perimenopause without necessarily having to take medication. And I go through the um, five pillars of health in my three months program where I cover the nutrition aspect. Um, we look at your gut and liver health, stress management, movement and sleep. 
And here are four pointers of what you can focus on if you're over 40 and have symptoms like the ones I've mentioned earlier. Number one, make sure you look after your liver really well. So reduce your intake of alcohol and um, eat a portion of broccoli, cabbage or cauliflower daily. Number two, especially in the first half of your cycle, have a tablespoon of ground flax seeds every day and you can buy them already ground, which makes it really convenient and easy. Um, add them to your porridge, smoothie, muesli, granola or yogurt, for example. This has really helped me with balancing my hormones after I've stopped taking the pill a few months ago. Tip number three, think about where in your life you can reduce your stress. I mentioned this a lot in my blogs, but cortisol, our main stress hormone, gets the VIP pass in the body so when we're stressed. So it produces less progesterone and estrogen. And you don't want to reduce those additionally to the natural reduction that is already happening in your body. And I'll post a link to a previous blog on how to lower your anxiety and cope better in the description. And number four, make sure that you are not deficient in vitamin D. Vitamin D is so important for a lot of things in the body and really helps with reducing the inflammation, which is key in the perimenopausal phase. As it's a bit difficult at the moment to get a blood test done via the GP, you can order an easy to do uh, test at home, which is a finger prick test. And I'll post a link to it in the description as well. And once you know your levels, send the results to your GP or get in touch with a health pr practitioner such as myself. And I can help you figure out what supplement to take, how much and for how long. It can be a little overwhelming with all those things that need to be considered when our hormones start to go a bit haywire. I am here to help you make sense of it all and take the guesswork out of what's healthy for you and what's not. And to find out more about testing and how it can be of help, book yourself in for a free 30 minute discovery call with me. And I'm looking forward to speaking with you. Until then, take good care of yourselves. Bye bye.